I'll explain. So for workshops, okay, anybody who wants the code to be reviewed, contact me on Microsoft Teams, push it into a repository. One to one, I'll go through your code. Okay? So there is no proper way of doing something in computer science. There are like 50 different proper ways. So the way I show you, it's got to be my taste, but it's very possible that many of you is doing it in a way. But if you want a review on your code, on your workshop, I will go through your workshops randomly. I look every third, like third person. I'll go like that, and I'll make sure that, that you get feedback on your code at least twice from me throughout the semester. But I won't be able to give feedback to every single one of you. It takes a long time. Okay, so you're going to get it that way. But if you are really interested to get feedback, book an appointment. And if like, there are three of you and then you want to do that, you can, we can set a meeting for three people and we all join together and we go through the code together. So these things we can do. These are quick, okay? Uh, so as I told you, I am not going to create Visual Studio projects anymore in class. I'm just going to double click on the VCX project and it's going to open the project for me, okay? Uh, like that, it's going to be quicker, and you know already how, it, how it's done. I put this computer in Power Saver. I don't know how long it, it has. It says 2 hours and 49 minutes, but I do not believe it, okay? All right. <laughs> it said that when it was brand new. If it still can do that, like, it's a very good computer, and believe me. Uh, that rarely happens. So <clears throat> we talked about uh, dynamic memory allocation last time we talked, and we said that uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation is when you uh, don't know at, we said there are two phases of your programming. One is runtime, the other one is compile time. Compiler is when you are sitting at your computer programming, and you compile your code and keep doing that. So if at that time you know what is the amount of memory you want, you don't need dynamic memory allocation. But if it's when you write your code, you finish your code, you compile, you create an executable, you pass the executable to another computer, you are not present, another user is running your program and working with you, and that's when you need to find out how much memory you need, that's when you need dynamic memory allocation. We say dynamic memory allocation happens in two different ways. Either you allocate an array of things, or you allocate one thing. To create, to allocate one thing, you have a pointer, you use the new keyword, and then the type. That type could be either a compound type or it could be uh, a primitive type. What is a compound type? Uh, which has like uh, more objects. She means it, it is built of other uh, types. So you have a, a type that has many types inside. Any structure that you use is a compound type. Got it? So you need, you may have a compound type that has a compound type and so on and so forth. So that's what happens. And you, when you say new, at the moment that the, com the compute, the, the uh, soft, the, your software, your, your program is running, at that time your program new is essentially instructing to your program to send a request to the operating system, ask for such amount of memory and give it back. What amount of memory equal to what you see in front of new? If you have one, it gives you one of that size and it sends them the, the address back. And if you need more, then you have to actually ask it like an array, which is like in here I'm saying, I'm, I'm having an array of numbers, I'm going to say new int, and this is how many I want. In here to demonstrate, we created that integer as a dynamic thing, and, and I mentioned this is a stupid thing to do. One integer, you don't save memory, you lose memory if you do that, because one integer is four bytes. To have it dynamic, you need four bytes for the pointer and four bytes for the thing, so you're losing. But we were just giving you an example of how it happens. So that's that. So in this case, if you want series of integers to be allocated, that's how you do it, exactly like an array. So you put in front of the type name. You want 50 employees. You write employee, square bracket, 50. It means I want 50, a uh, space for 50 employees to get created, and then put the employees in there, and send me the address back. And you capture that address in a pointer. As of that moment, you have a normal array of employees with a size of 50. 
and the same thing as uh, integers. It doesn't make any difference. Four integers, 10 integers, so on and so forth. What is extremely important is that your program should give back the memory to operating system when it's done, which means at the end we have to say uh, uh, delete the memory that you occupy. Okay? When you're deleting the memory that you occupied, you have to do it the same way you actually occupied it, you allocated it. If you allocated it like an array, you're going to say delete array num. You put square brackets so it knows there are several things attached to it. If you forget, it only deallocates de the first element, hence memory leak. What is memory leak? You forgetting to forgetting or your logic somehow exits without memory being deallocated. At line 25, I am deleting the individual, therefore I do not need the square bracket. One item gets deleted as one item, an array of items gets deleted as an array of items. Are we okay with this? All right. Now going back through all these things, we want to see actually how we can uh, uh, deal with uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation and everything inside what we call a class, okay? So now we want to learn a little bit of encapsulation. We've never talked about it, but we're going to go through it and we'll see what it is. Uh, something that everybody can relate to is a student. So what I'm going to do, first of all, in I'm going to save this one. Sorry, I'm going to save this one as... Uh, Wow, it takes a long time. Okay, I'm going to call it A. Uh, DMA stands for Dynamic Memory Allocation. So when I say DMA, that's what it means. DMA review. So we know that what, what was that. Now I'm going to create a module for a student. So we want to create a student. And this student is going to have all the good things that we are going to use. Dynamic memory allocation, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to create the student. So to create the student, I'm going to actually go here, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do it automatically, but I'm going to show you, you can do it manually too. You can, you can create, you can create uh, the header file separately and the source file header separately. So any module that you are creating a class in, uh, we'll, we'll come, we'll, I'll explain exactly what a class is. Uh, remember what I told you when I say class, structure, structure, class, potatoes, potatoes, down to this point. So whenever you are creating a class, okay, whenever you are creating a class, the class you are creating needs two files, a header file and a CPP file, okay? There is no question about that. All the prototype and uh, uh, definitions of the, the class will go into the header file, and all the implementations will go to the, to the uh, declarations, go to the header file, and all the implementations of the, of the class will go to the CPP file. So how it is, is in header file. What it does, it's in a CPP file. In a header file, you should never have a statement that executes, that runs, okay? Header file is only for introduction, okay? Mr. Cameron is a teacher over here, very good teacher. I just introduced Cameron. Some of you guys know Cameron already, right? Now, to actually get Cameron executed, you have to go to the neighboring class and talk to Cameron and be, and be taught by him, right? So that's the difference. So, so how I do it, I'm just going to right-click over here. And I'm going to say uh, new, add. In here, I'm going to say class. You see that? And I'm going to name this class student. As soon as I do that, it's going to create the student header file in the header file and student CPP in the CPP. You see that? And it's going to call it a class. But we don't know what a class is, so we're going to write struct. But you know class and struct, potatoes, potatoes. They are exactly the same. Are we OK with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, okay, so, so I made it. So now, and as you see, I haven't set it up so it does it my code style. It does it most of the people, like most of the people in Planet, they write it that way. I'm crazy, I put it in front of it. So I have to fix it. I have to actually go, you can go to the automation and set it to do it exactly how you want, but I didn't do that. And so that becomes that. 
and then student.cpp, you have include. So we know what happened, right? Are we okay down to this point? The next thing we need to do to make this thing match what we want to do is to actually add the namespace stds here because all our code in header file and the uh, source code has to be in namespace stds. In future, I may ignore that when I'm teaching just to, because I want to be quick, because you can put stuff out of a namespace if you want to. But I'm just doing it so you know what the standards are. The, and then you add the safeguards. So you're going to say, if not defined, and then S, all capital, SDDS, student, H, and you copy and paste, never retype it, because if you made a boo-boo and misspell the second one without knowing you have a very bad bug, okay? So, and then I simply uh, delete that one, and I'll go define. There we go. And then I'll take everything that I have over here and put it in there. Now I have an empty module to start working with. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Okay. Next thing next. What does a student have? A uh, name. Name. Thank you very much. So a student will have a name. So we're going to put a name. A normal, like a, an average student's name is? Size, size. So say 20 characters. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, so average student, which means 50% of the students over here, like Mrs. John, Mrs. John, Mr. John. <laughs> we are all John over here. No Janes. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so, so uh, uh, a name. So we're going to put a name for the student character. And this is a regulation that you follow from now on till you are under my supervision in any class. This is my rule. Any variable inside a class is a member variable. Therefore, it starts with a lowercase m underline. And then you think about the name. So m, name. That's the name of the student. And we said it's an array 50 characters long. OK? Let's put it that way. Are we okay? So we are doing it like this. Don't look at me like that. No dynamic memory allocation yet. Let's, because he's like, what? Let, no, it's not. It's 51. We'll do it dynamic after, okay? First, we're going to learn a few things. So what else does student have? Uh, a number. ID number. Oh, thank you. Student ID number. Because a number could be a phone number. could be number of shoes. So I, I don't know. So we're going to have a student number. And what is the type of a, a student number, you think? What do you put for a student number as a type? What is your student number? How many digits do you have? Does it have? You don't know. <laughs> integer. I don't know. Integer. Yeah, integer is good enough because it has nine digits, and that's that's enough for the for the thing. Uh, uh, we know some of them start with zero, but then later on we're gonna. We'll assume in this case that student numbers don't start with zero. Okay. Which brings me to something that I have to tell you as a thing. So for now, I'm going to say int. Uh, but can a student number be minus 55? No. So it's a good idea to make it unsigned int, if I can type it. Unsigned int uh, m student number. Are we OK with this? All right. Uh, yeah. What else? What else? Uh, how do you see from here? Are you OK? You want to you wanna sit here? Or are you, you're OK with it? Seriously? Yeah. I know, I'm getting dizzy seeing you sitting over there. All right. So uh, what else does student has? Uh, integer and grade. Grade. <coughs> grade for what? Uh, Which grade GP, is you need? GPA. GPA. Thank you. Thank you. GPA. So what should be a type of GPA? Uh, double. Double. OK, double. I would go with float because double is like very precise, right? It's just like 4.5. Like you don't want to have 4.1.16592, right? So well, well, um, do you mind if I make it a float? Yeah. OK, float it is. So float because we don't want to be as precise, OK? Uh, so I'm going to have over here float M GPA. Are we good with this? That's a new version of float, by the way. <laughs> That's float version 1.1. .1. OK. 
Uh, and by the way, workshop uh, uh, two, part two, DIY, has some problems that we are fixing. So get ready, different versions are going to come. Some things are not matched, like uh, the main that they created doesn't generate the thing. So we are like, you know, I have to see what's wrong with it to fix it. Okay, so get ready for ver new ver the version. Start implementing. Don't worry. It's just going to be something like this is going to be shown first or the other one. There's nothing uh, awfully bad about it. So that's what it is. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so, so, so I have a student like this and my, my screen just went, oh, there we go, okay, because it just went black and I didn't, anyways, so uh, you should be able to set the information of a user, correct, uh, of a student. When you create a student, when the student comes to Seneca College, what are the things out of these three you need to set? Age? You <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, which one of these things is set when you just like? Uh, should be a student ID or a student ID? Student ID and? Email. <laughs> Do you see an email over there? Name. Name, thank you. Okay, so name. So student, student, student ID. And, and I want to set those things, right? So what do I do? Because this is an object-oriented thing and we have encapsulation, in here I'm going to say void set. Now, if I want this set to get something from the keyboard, that's it. If I want it to be a set to receive something from another function and set it, it's going to be void set and it's going to be const character pointer name and unsigned int student number, right? But, so how does these things actually relate with those values? I'm going to tell you something that is going to make everything crystal clear, okay? When you create a class and you bring the functions inside the class, all the member variables of the class become global to the functions inside. Got it? So M name is accessible in set. M STNO is accessible in set. So how do we actually how, how do we actually uh, write this thing? I can actually write it right over here. I can actually do the set in here. So in here I can actually do this. I can actually write it right over here. Well, we said no executables in header file, right? because this is its prototype. So I'm going to go actually to the CPP file and implement that. And how do I do that? First, I'm going to split the window so we can see what are we dealing with over here, the left and right. And a back of the class, that's the furthest part that we are. My friend, tell me, can you see this? Not now? How about now? It didn't change, did it? <laughs> How about now? <laughs> is it better? No, you can't see it? Okay, the guy beside, can you see it? You come to the front seat. Because <laughs> I want to have some real estate for heaven's sake in here. Uh, if I make it smaller, then. So, if, like, uh, how about you, sir? Can you see it? Okay, so please come, come. Beautiful lady over here waiting for you. Come. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, perfect. Okay, so now if I want to do this, it, I am in student CPP, right? And it's including student header file, correct? So including student header file, what does it do to the text? Like when you say include, what does it do? We're using the header file. Yeah, but well, what does it mean we are using the header file? Using the prototype to tell the compiler. <laughs> okay, so what does it mean when we say use, what does actually include mean? Uh, copy and paste. Copy and paste! Fantastic! So it literally copies and pastes that, that thing over here. So it has full access to it. Because it has full access to it, I just need to, if I just write over here sat, I don't know who does it belong to, if I can type it. I don't know who does it belong to. But I want to tell that this thing belongs to student. First of all, I have to say what it returns. What does set return? 
Void, thank you. Nothing in C++ is void. So void. Who does it belong to? Student. OK? Student. So you put a scope resolution. Scope resolution is for designing. It's not for action. If I want a student set to be called, it's dot. But when I'm creating it, telling it what it does, when I'm designing it, it's scope resolution. So when you want to say something belongs to a class, it's scope resolution. But when you instantiate student to a variable called s, then it's s dot. It's exactly like uh, structures in C language. So in here, now it's, as you see, it's telling me all the things that set student has. Which one you want to deal with? I want set. Why is it showing only one set? Because it's overloaded. Polymorphism. If I go on it, it's going to say two overloads. It's going to have to show that, that I have. So I'm going to write over here set. And in here, I'm going to put the set for the name and a student number. So in here, I'm going to say, what do I say? What do I say? Uh, I'm going to say name. Uh, so I'll put the exact same thing. So I'm just going to bring the exact same thing. Copy. Because I'm lazy. I'm going to put it right over here. So that's the implementation of the set function. Oh gosh, I can't see what I'm typing. So let's do it like this so we can see. OK? And then in here, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to save everything. All right. So as you see, that green wiggly thingy is gone. But don't trust it. Sometimes IntelliSense goes bananas. OK? So I've done that. OK? Now I'm going to create the other one. Void student set with nothing in it. They don't return anything, right? I am ready to compile it. Don't code anything. Just compile and see if you made any boo-boos or not. OK? So I'm just going to go to the Solution Explorer and right-click on that one only. And I'm going to right-click and say compile. Compile means just compile this individual. Remember that compiler has runs for every single file? I'm just saying, just compile this one. I don't want to build the whole thing, have an executable. I just want you to compile this one if everything's OK. So as soon as you do this and you do compile, it compiles and yada, yada, yada. I think because I put it on, on battery saver, it's so slow. But I'm happy. I, I'd rather be slow than not, no computer. So it actually says succeeded, right? If I actually go to the directory of this, so I'm going to right click over here. I'm going to say show in folder. If I go over here, x64, because I'm doing a 64 bit compile, if it was, uh, an, uh, if you set the compiler to, to, comp to compile in a 86 one, then that directory will be debug. OK? Uh, but when you, well, when you are doing x64, it actually shows x64. So x64, if I go over here, you will see that there is a debug. And in that debug, there is student object. Student object is the compiled code, binary code, machine code of what I wrote. And I just wrote nothing. <laughs> so essentially, that's a machine code for nothing. OK? It's just an empty thing. It doesn't do anything. It's just an empty student with nothing, right? Goody, goody. Are we OK down to this point? So if I have a student, I want to be able to show a student, right? Show what a student has and what it does and all the good stuff, right? So for that, I'm going to have over here void show. Do I need to pass anything to show? No. Show has access to all the good stuff that show has and wants to display. Are we OK with this? Beautiful. So if I have that one, but I have a question. Do you mind if I call you Jack? You mind? Please, let me call you Jack. <laughs> so if I actually want to name this gentleman Jack, I am actually changing something in him, correct? But if I ask you, what's your name? Maddie. Maddie. Did anything change in him by giving me his name? 
No. So displaying stuff never changes the stuff. Setting the stuff will change the stuff. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? If I, if I get a copy of your workshop to hand into Fardad, nothing changes with your workshop, correct? But if I help you write your workshop, then your workshop changes because now I'm, I am doing stuff in it. I'm setting it to something. Are we okay with this? Now, the cool thing about this object orientation thing is that you can make this a const, which means you are reminding yourself. It's like, uh, you see those things that you put a little thread on your finger not to forget to take your adapter to school? Okay? <laughs> something like, so these, it's something like that. So when you put the const over there, you are actually reminding yourself, I'm not supposed to change anything. This function's job is not, is something that is not supposed to modify its owner. It's just supposed to display it. And it, and, and also, also, uh, because now I know how to implement it, I can simply come on this screwdriver thingy, and in here I'm going to say create the definition in student.cpp. Poof, it's there. Okay, so it can do it can do it for me too, and then it's right, it lets you write it over there. But of course, the syntax, the, the 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 style is not like mine, so I have to fix it. So there we go. That's the student show. So these are the things I want to show the student. Okay, and I want. Okay, are we be okay down to this point? Are we good? So what I'm going to do in here is this. Now let's set the student. First, I'm going to go over here. To set the student, I need to do uh, the string copy and all those good stuff, right? OK. Let me just do something, if you don't mind, in here. I want to cheat. Uh, OP244, notes archive. Uh, last semester is good. I just want to get a module from there that I had that has all these good stuff in here. So in here, I'm going to call it utils. Now it's going to give me 55,000 different versions of it, I think. There we go. OK, utils, utils, utils. Uh, where is the date on this thing? Um, one. Let me go by detail. View. I just want the date, the latest one. Oh, I, sorry. How is it possible 2023? Ah, oh, I, I, uh, sorry, I, I'll tell you what. I wanted to see which one, which one is the latest one so I can pick that one up, but I didn't realize that I, I wiped out the repository and cloned the new one, therefore everything's for, <laughs> so sorry about that. My apologies, let me just go it by some other way, which is here, which has the date. Actually, you know what, let me just see what happens. I'm gonna say open, just lock. Yeah, this is good enough. So I'm going to right click over here and go to open file location. And I'm going to take the utils.cpp and h from here, copy it, and come back over here. Say add new item. So it shows the current, oh, sorry, existing item. So it shows my current directory. No, not current directory. I'm going to come to current directory that is here. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go paste. So these are the utils that I just brought from there. I'm going to add it to this one. And this utils of mine has lots of good stuff, so I don't have to write C++, uh, the, the include standard input output, s s include string header file anymore, okay? But, but if I, so, but just to, to tell you, uh, 
how do we do it in C++? I'm going to use this one, which is utils.h. It has string copy and all the good stuff that we need. But if you wanted to include string header file, if you wanted to, you don't do string.h anymore. Anything that comes from C language, you add a C at the beginning and you remove the rest. If you want a string, you do it that way. Okay, C string. And careful, this is an absolutely different beast. Okay, yeah, C string. Well, we don't want it because I have utils, so I'm going to include utils in here. You can later on go take a look at utils and see how I implemented different things that are needed to. And it has, it has many different things in there that you can actually use. Okay? So now in here, I'm going to say SDR copy into, uh, actually SDR end copy into uh, the destination, which is M name because I have access to it, I can actually write it. Remember, set, 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 set is a method inside student. Therefore, it has access to all its properties. Okay? It's like me. If my head itches, then I do this. I have access to my head. If I did that to him, probably I'm going to get a slap in the face. Right? So everybody have access to their own heads, and that's what's happening in here. So SDR end copy into name. And in here, I'm going to say uh, from name that is coming in up to 50 characters. OK? And uh, uh, then in here, I'm going to say M name 50. Again, I, I, I sincerely. Uh, Ask for those people who, who know all these stuff and are bored with these things, don't come to class, please. If, if you're coming to class, respect other people and don't talk in my class, please, okay? Um, all right. If you know these things and it's boring you, just, just don't come. I, I'll give you your A plus and you're going to go, no grudges. I, I'm happy that you know all these things, and please, okay? All right, so. Um, so that's that one. And then after we are done with this, so this is done, uh, str and copy. Uh, so now we have to set the student number. So I'm going to say m student number set to student number. <laughs> All right. And in here, if I want to do the set, this is a set that is coming from outside, right? So in here, I'm going to create a student number, unsigned student number. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Student number and uh, uh, a name uh, that is character name 51. Okay. And then in here, I'm going to say uh, C out. And you all know, as soon as I say C out, I'll come here and add the header file for it. So in here, I'm going to say include IO stream. And obviously, I am using namespace std in here. I'm going to say C out name to receive a name. In here, I'm going to say C in into name, which is not going to work. You will see. Okay? Uh, it will work, but if the person doesn't have a space in its name, if they have a space in its name, we're in trouble. Don't worry, I'm going to show you a function CN has that it's not going to cause any trouble. So CN name, and then in here I'm going to say uh, uh, CN student number. And probably that's not going to work either. You'll see that. Uh, C out student number. Student number. And I'm going to go CN. STNO, and then I'm going to use the other function that I have. I simply say over here, set name and STNO. You follow what happened? So I'm reusing my code. I'm not going to, don't, if you, ha if you have a function that does it, 
does what you actually do. Okay? Don't repeat doing it, no matter how simple it is. You know why? Because if you want to change the logic of setting your class, then you have to go find out where you have done it and keep changing it in 50 different places. But if you reuse your code and then you change, decide to change the logic of your setting of the name, then you just go at one place and you change it. Because you reuse your code, it's going to get updated everywhere. Are we okay with this? We are in it. We are in, we. Do I keep, you keep reminding you that you're in room 570? Why? Because you are in room 570. If you were outside, then I would say, go to room 570. But when we are inside, we don't need to refer to it anymore. I am creating the namespace STDS. So I am inside of it. I don't need to. I don't, I don't need to mention it. OK? So in showing here, I simply am going to sh uh, display the student name, uh, display information for students. So in here, uh, it's not a good, good way of doing it, but I'm just going to say name over here. And I'm going to put M name. And, uh, uh, and then I'm going to put probably something like a comma, and I'm going to say student number. And in here, I'm going to show the, uh, the student number. As you see, the GPA is forgotten for now. We'll think, we'll think about that later. So student number, and I'm going to show M student number. So, uh, and uh, I can go to new line, okay? So that's what I'm doing. So, and I'm going to go to new line so I can actually... Uh, fit them all in the same in, in the same place like that and I'm gonna go and L over here. So it kind of shows what happens. For now I'm gonna comment this thing and I'm gonna say what am I gonna say over here? I'm gonna say later. Okay, so I'm gonna do that later, not now. Are we okay with this? Because uh, step by step you don't do everything. Okay, first you fix one place, make sure it works, gives you the satisfaction that something is working, then you make it. If you start coding everything and then you run it, you're going to end up with 50 different things that you have to fix. That's exhaustion, that's problem. So make one thing work and you're done. So now if I have this code of mine, okay, like this, now let's actually try it and see how it works. So first I'm going to save it. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to go to prg.cpp, and in here, I'm going to remove all these good stuff that I have written for absolutely no reason. And in here, I will say, what do I say? I'm going to say, uh, student. I can't say that because I didn't include student. So I'm going to say, include student. Uh, sorry. Student, what's going on? No, it, sh it should show it. It means I didn't save the student at the proper place. Let me look at the directory. I think I saved it somewhere else. Let me check. Come on. No, I have student in here. 4 January 23rd. Student.h. So the intelligence is, is late again. Or maybe P. We'll see. Oh, it says pointers. No, this, this prg.cpp is not mine. Don't save. Add existing item. So let me remove this. See what happened? This PRG is added from other sec other uh, thing. I'll remove from other directory. It happens all the time. Careful with that. Add existing item. Now I'm going to bring this PRG up. Where is it? So the review is missing. Let me bring the review here too. So I put everything in the other one. And as you see, I changed PRG. Let me revert that. that the good thing is that because it's tortoise, I'm going to go over here and say revert. It goes back to what it was before. 
and come on. Okay, there we go. Revert and DMA review. I'm going to cut. I want to bring it in here and put it in our thing because uh, it went back and forth. Paste. Okay, so back in business. Now let's actually add existing item. Add existing item. For CPV. Do you realize what happened? Like when I wanted to include, it showed what was beside PRG.CPP, not uh, the one that I had. So now I'm going to open up PRG.CPP. Now I'm going to remove everything in here. And repeat. So now include student. Thank you very much. Student.h. Now I'm going to create over here student. Because, because, oh, using namespace SDDS, SDDS, student S, and what do we have over here? We have our several student. I simply say over here, uh, S, uh, S dot set in here for, uh, as you see, it says two overloads, right? I'm going to come over here. This is name, and the other one is nothing. And it shows the comment that says later. <laughs> you see that? The reason I'm going to do it later. So um, that's for the thing afterwards, the, the GPA thingy that I want to set. But anyways, so uh, we are coming over here uh, in this one. So in here, I'm going to put Fred in here. And for the student number, I'll put 123123. Easy breezy, right? Why is it giving me an error? No one says over the area. Oh, because it's, oh, silly me. Sorry about that. Yeah, there you go. So I was passing two strings. <laughs> All right. Now in here I can say s dot show, and it's going to show everything. Okay. So if I actually run the program now, three years later, four years later, five years later, and it's going to say str variable maybe unsafe. What? No. What is the utils that I have? Oh, my apologies. I brought the wrong one. This is too rich for your blood. This is too rich for you. I'm going to use string header file. This is too rich for your blood. Too rich for your blood. I brought the, something that, that, that I'm going to change it to later on. I'm going to exclude from the project. There you go. Now I'm going to go back in here and do exactly what I wanted to do initially, which is including, <laughs> including string. Include. Oh, it has to be before custom. So I'm going to go include string C string. C string. And then I'm going to go in the output because I never remember what actually that phrase was because I always copy and paste instead of remember copy. And I'm going to come back over here and say, uh, define, and you are familiar with this. You have done it 55,000 times in IPC 144. So now SDR and copy will work with that one. C string, and we're good. All right, save. Let's do it one more time. F10. Man, this, this is taking a long time. Okay, let's go have a coffee. <laughs> Come on. All right, so now it's running. So now take a look. So it starts, as you see, as you see, it starts like this, and S is there with name being garbage. And j just take a look. It shows actually what name has. Name has garbage and garbage, right? That's what it has. So what do we do? We are setting it. So we're going to go F11 over here. And then we'll come down over here. We are copying Fred into name. So name has Fred. And we are setting the student number to 123123. One, three. Now when we go out and take a look at S, it has a name as Fred and student number as 12313. One, three. Are we okay with this? And then we're going to run this, uh, do show. So it comes to show. And in here, it's going to show everything. And the result is going to be this. Name Fred, student number, yada, yada, yada. 
all right? And then it comes out, and then the student dies, and bye-bye. Questions? Line 11 in student.cpp. Oh, oh, so you don't know how SDRM copy works from my PC? You, what, how, what? But not SDRM copy. Okay. SDR copy, how does this SDR copy work? Destination string. What is a string? No, no, no. What is a string? Null terminated array of strings. So how does SDR copy work? It copies character by character over. As soon as it hits the null, it copies the zero. Correct? Okay. SDR end copy does the exact same thing. Unless it hits the limit. If it reaches 50, it's not going to copy that zero anymore. It's not going to null terminate the destination. Why did I do that? To make sure if somebody puts a name that is too big, it's not going to crash my program. It's going to only copy 50, but because it hits the 50, it's not going to null terminate it anymore. Just to be safe, I make the 51st one zero. No. So this, this makes sure if name hits 50, the target, that is M name, is null terminated. But, but, what happens if name is 5? It's going to copy 5 and it's going to null terminate it, right? And again, it's going to go make 50 zero. Who cares? It's after zero, right? So that's just the guarantee that is not going to. Are we okay with this? All right, so that's that. And if I want to actually set it after this, I, I'm, I'm going to come over here in name. Now I'm going to say over here, uh, what does, uh, so in here I'm going to say, see out, enter student info. And then I'm going to say s dot set. But I'm not going to mention anything anymore. I'm not going to say what type of set. Okay? So this set is setting for, because I'm not giving it anything, obviously it's getting it from somewhere. Where? From the keyboard. So now if I run the program three years later, four years later, There we go. So we know all these things are done. I'm not going to walk through them. And it's going to say enter student information, obviously, right? And then after that, and after that, it's going to go into set. So in this set is going to get the name. So in here, I'm going to do F10. It's going to get the name. I'm going to write over here, Jack. Hello, Jack. Okay. Jack, and I'm going to hit enter. So now Jack is in name, right? And let's see what happens. It says student number, and then it receives the student number. That is 234234, and I hit enter. Now student number is set. So I have Jack and student number. We know set works. I'm not going to go through it again. So I'm going to do an F10. Now it's setting it. Now it comes back out, and I say show. And it shows Jack with student number 234234. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? They're okay? They're okay. Now, what? I'm, I'm going to run it just right now. I'm just going to quickly run it right to the end. What if I do this? So name, I'm going to write over here, Fred Soleil. And I hit enter. This is what happens. OK? Kind of. 
doesn't work. Why? Because space is a delimiter. What is a delimiter? What is a delimiter? A separator, right? Delimiter is something that's separate. So if you put a space, it's going to read the thread and it stops. As it, it's ended. Right? So what do we do? Nothing. We actually have a function in C in that does that. We, we can actually use that one instead. So it's better in C in to actually read the thing properly in here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? In this, uh, in this set thing, instead of C in name, I'm going to say, hey, C in, get a line for me. That's a new version. C in, <laughs> get line. And in this get, li get line has 55,000 different things, but this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to put. So I'm going to put the thing over here that is name. And in here, I'm going to say up to over here. In get name, you put the actual number. It's not like because it's a C++ thing, OK? You put the actual number, OK? Which means that's 51. If it reaches to 51, it stops, null terminates it. In the doesn't know. It, it fits the 51 and C in fails. So if it reaches to the, to the edge of the thing, C in says you enter too many first and the rest will remain in your keyboard. It's not going to read it. Okay? So that's what it does. But, pardon me? Yeah, but we are not doing foolproof entry now. I'm just teaching you what get lint. Like we're gonna go through full proof entry and everything later as we are going through. Okay? But for now, just let's let's just let's not talk about it. Okay. But well, well, I'll explain later. But 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 I, but I explain later. When we come when we come to uh these are these are the details that we gotta go through. Just 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 remember. Get line stops and at backslash in and eats it. Okay? Stops at so you don't have to flush afterwards. It stops and backslash in and eats it. Okay? So now if I actually do it, now if I run the program, I can actually do Fred Soleil. So three years later, I can actually write over here Fred Soleil. And student number three four five three four five, tada, and I receive. So if you wanted space to be included, that's what you do. Get line has many different overloads. Okay, it has different overloads. Get line. We're gonna learn them one by one. For now, baby steps. This is the first one. Are we okay? But again, uh, as practice. This is what you can do. If it reaches, like, make that one five instead so it fails when it's too long. And try to write a loop that flush and tell the, uh, tell the user. You can do that. Try it. Okay? So you can do a foolproof thing. If C in fails, like the thing that I did over there, you can, you can uh, clear it, flush it using ignore up to backslash in, and tell the user you entered too many characters. Try again. And then loop back up. So you can do foolproof entry like that. Are we okay with this? So ladies and gentlemen, that's how uh, uh, member variables work. Member uh, uh, functions work. And member functions can return things too. But there is a problem in here that I have. Problem over here is that if I, I can actually do this, take a look. Okay. Now I'm going to run the program and see what happens. So in here I'm going to say Fred Soleil, right? Now in here I'm going to say three four five three four five, and it's six 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 six. Okay. So what's wrong in here? This is what's wrong. I am your professor, right? And you want to be nice to me, so I can, uh, later on I'll be nice to you. So we go to Tim Hortons, we want to have a coffee together and talk about problems with our code, right? 
You go over there, you get your coffee, and I want to get my coffee. I don't have my wallet with me. I'm going to say, can I borrow $1.50 to get a coffee? Probably you're going to give it to me, right? Right? As like, I lent it to you, right? So I'll get it, and later on I'll give you $1.50. Everybody's okay with this? Now, let's reverse the scenario. I am actually doing the, the thing. The, uh, uh, we are going to the Tim Hortons, and you are getting the coffee and you don't have, I don't have money, what I will do, I will put my hand in your pocket and look for $1.50. What's going to happen? Slap in the face, right? Why? What is the difference? The outcome is the same. As students say, they both work. What was wrong with the second one? Privacy. I invaded your privacy. That's one of the most aspect, important aspects of object orientation. So what we do, the things we do not want people to touch, we make them private. So now, in here I'm going to say private, and these are the public stuff. So what happens now? Of course. Set is mine. I can put my hand in my pocket and give you five bucks. I can do that because it's my function. You are invoking my give me five dollars function, which goes in here and gives you five dollars, right? But the other one, putting your hand in my pocket, slapping a face scenario, is prevented over here. How? If a code, if any part of our code does not belong to and it's not a member of student, they cannot touch what we have. And in here it says, yada, 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 yada. It says this one is inaccessible. It's private. You can't touch it. That brings, that brings safety to our design. From whom? From yourself. And from other programmers who work with your program. If you are writing a set function and they can fiddle with the properties, with the attributes of your class, there is no guarantee that your set is going to work properly. Like this, there is a guarantee. Are we OK with this? Now, what is the difference between a class and a structure? A structure is public by default, where a class is private by default. You don't need to write private. Everything inside the class is private unless you make it public. Are we okay with this? So if you go to an interview for C++ for, I don't know, whatever, okay? They ask you, ask you, in C++, what is the difference between a structure and a class? Your answer should be nothing. They are exactly the same. One is private by default. The other one is public by default. Done. So when I say a class, it is really a structure. They are the same. Just one is private, the other one is public. Are we okay with this? Right? So if I run this now, we know like if I actually want to run this now, I'm gonna get a compiler, which is not going to allow to get compiled because I did something wrong over there. I'll put three years later that's gonna happen. Build errors and so on and so forth. So now it is inaccessible and I'll do it that way. So if I run this now. Three years later, it works perfectly and everything works nicely. So, John Doe, and 131313, and we have it. Are we okay? Are we okay? Problemo? No? Okay. Something about show and display and all these good stuff. Should I tell you this now? Have it for later. It's later. Let's make this dynamic. Okay? Because student, you are putting 51 characters. The, the guy's name is Fred Soleil, for heaven's sake. Like how many, how many characters is that? So let's make it dynamic. So our class has the exact same amount of characters needed for the name. 
Are we okay with this? So how do we do that? First of all, let's do our set, because set is the one that is actually setting the student, right? For, I have to go back to my student design, and I'm going to say, hey, this is not an array anymore, but it's a dynamic array, right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Uh, let me just do something before that. Student, I'm going to call it a-student.h, save it. And the other one is going to be a-student.cpp. And in a-student.cpp, I have to include a-student.h. Right? Save. Okay. So the reason is that I, I, I want to change it. I want you to have the old version. So let's come to student.h. First of all, uh, let me just take all these things. Uh, that GPA thingy, we're going to talk about it later. I don't want to have too many ba bells, of, bells and whistles to inter interfere with what we want to do with the student. So I'm just using those two. Are we okay with this? Okay. So let's make it dynamic. If I want to make it dynamic, how do I do it? I'm going to. Uh, come over here and say, okay, so first of all, this is going to be a pointer, not uh, uh, an array. It's going to be a dynamic array. So, so it's going to be a, I'm going to write over here, DMA for a student name. So it's going to be dynamic memory allocation. Now I'm going to go to set. Set, 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 set. I'm going to go in set. So if you want to go to set quickly, right click over here and say go to definition. Boom. It goes to the definition. Okay, so that's a very quick way to go through it. So first, I have to allocate enough space for the name, right? Okay, so but there's a problem in here. Problem is that, problem is that, okay, let me do it, then when it fails, we'll explain. Okay, <laughs> okay so in here, I'm going to say, let's first do a, a so I'm going to say over here, name, m name, is equal to new character. So how long it's supposed to be? Do, aren't you receiving a name from, uh, from the argument list? You're, you are just, you just need to allocate exactly to the same size of that name, correct? How do you find the length of a, of a string? strlen. So in here, I'm going to say, get me exactly the same amount of thing as I need as the strlen of name. Plus one. We have one zero at the end. You don't do that. That's 90% of your segmentation fault core dump thingy, and you're going to say something went wrong with my dynamic memory allocation. One always needed because that's the size. You need one for the null, right? Was I dramatic enough on that? <laughs> All right, so what do we need? Now, we don't need SDRN copy anymore because the sizes fit exactly. I don't need to worry about anything being out of size or anything like that. Just copy it, right? But I need to have some function added to student, sadly. And that function would be void, say, terminate. Why? Because if I don't do that, the program's going to end, and the student name will stay in memory forever. I need to wipe it out, correct? So this terminate thingy of mine, which I'm going to create, is going to delete the name. Are we okay with this? Any questions down to this point? Am I going too fast? Are we okay? All right. 
So now I'm going to come in this program. I cannot set any, uh, oh, actually I can. So set, I'm going to set here to Fernando Solimanova. No, Solimanov. Okay, that's good. Okay, something like that. Actually, that was my last name a long time ago. But anyway, so, so now let's do this. And in here at the end, I'm going to say S dot terminate, because if I don't do that, I'm going to have memory leak, right? So, so now in here, I'm going to go F10, and let's see what happens. All right, let's bring this to right, and bring this to left, and start. So it starts, comes over here. S has what in it? Read, error reading characters of string. Why? Because that memory doesn't belong to it. It's garbage. It is a pointer that is pointing to garbage. There is nothing in it. It is, it, there is something in it. Well, because the address is something that doesn't belong to you, it's some garbage value, that memory is probably somewhere halfway through RAM that doesn't belong to you. Okay? And the other one is garbage too. So now we're going to go to set that Fernando Schmandando thingy. So I'm going to come over here. What am I going to do? F11. I'll go inside. Now it's, uh, it's going to actually measure what is the side of that thing is. And it's going to add one to it and put it in name. Now name is not saying error reading anymore. It's just garbage. But it's my garbage. Got it? It's garbage, but it's my garbage. Now I'm going to overwrite that garbage with the exact same size that I allocated, which is the name that I have. Therefore, now my name has exactly Fernando Solimanov over there, right? And then uh, the student number will be set. What did I set it to? What was it? One, two, three, one, two, three. Now it comes out. Show works exactly the same way as the other one. It doesn't make any difference, dynamic or non-dynamic. It's an array. And then when everything is over, it comes to terminate. And in terminate, it says, delete that name. It's not needed anymore. Now, if I look at the name, there is just one F at the beginning. It doesn't know that it's an array, right? And that's that. And now it doesn't belong to me anymore. It's gone. Bye-bye. Deleted. And program ends. And it's now dynamic. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? There is one slight problem here. Two slight problems. Problem number one. What if I set it again? What if I forget to terminate? Memory leak. I don't like that. Reallocation, let's deal about that again. But what if I just show it before I do anything? It's going to crash, right? I want to have a safe thing. We have two functions, and I called it functions, and I already regret it. They are not functions. We have two things we can create in a class. We have two things we can create in a class that they can be called automatically. They are functions, but they are not functions. They are procedures. They are things to do when the object is just created, and things to do right before the object is about to die. We can create these procedures. The first one is called a constructor. A constructor's job is to get called, and you don't call it, you can never, ever call a constructor manually. Remember what I'm telling you, mark my words. You are not allowed to. You can, but the results are beyond your pay grade, OK? Too rich for your blood. You cannot call a constructor. You should never think 
uh, of constructor as a function. A constructor is a procedure, is a special type of function that is called automatically when an object is getting created. You don't call it. You create the object and it comes to being. It calls. And destructor, it's something that gets called when the object is just about to die, right before the time that it's going to die. So essentially, the constructor is you buying a new plate and you wash it before you want to eat it. That's your constructor. And the destructor is you washing it after you eat to put it back so it's clean. <laughs> OK? So that's what we do. How do we create it? Oh, I thought the, OK. How much left? 40% remaining. All right. It doesn't tell me how many out time. It doesn't tell me what's the time, how long it takes, but I'm going to be quick. So how do we do that? In a class, OK? So this terminate, I'm going to call it deallocate. Because it's not terminate anymore, because I'm not going to end the, the object with it, I just want to deallocate. So I'm going to call it deallocate. And then in the header file, you create what it, that is, looks like a function. The way to specify the constructor is that the name of what you are writing is identical to the name of the class. So you call student. And the other one is a tilde student. This one is a constructor. And as you see, they don't have a return type. Why? They are not functions. OK? They are procedures to be. So, and this one is destructor. Actually, destructor is, is not even an English word. It came to the thing. If you look at it, like if you look for it, te text thingies want to fix it. Deconstructor, they call it. I don't know. But since I remember, we called it destructor, and we are happy about it. So destructor. How do we do it? It's the exact same way like writing a function. No difference. So in here, I'm going to write over here, right? V I'm going to write student. So it belongs to student. And the name is student. OK? Um, student. OK? There you go. Now in here, I'm going to do everything that I need to do to clean up my object. What do I do? First thing is to set that name to null. Because that is the rule of dynamic memory allocation that I'm just about to tell you. Any unused pointer in dynamic memory allocation must be set to null PTR, because that's the ineffective way of showing what a pointer like. This pointer is not being used. That's the flag for it. So immediately, I'm going to say M name is set to null PTR. That's number one. And it's a good idea to set the student number to something impossible that we can actually recognize, like zero. Nobody has a student number zero, right? We call this a safe, empty state. You set the attributes of the class in a way you can recognize. OK? Then what do you do? Then what do you do in your destructor that works the exact same way? It's written the exact same way, but with a tilde. Student, destructor, student. OK? In here, you do everything you need to do to wipe it out. What do we do? Delete. M name. Do I need to worry that M name is not set? It is impossible for M name not to be null when student is created, because you have that logic in its constructor. It's impossible for a student to go away without name being deallocated, because that's in its logic. Are we OK with this? Now, now that I have this, uh, let me actually run the code and see what happens. So now that I have this, I'm going to go back to my program in here, and I'm going to remove that terminate, terminate thingy that I had. But remember I told you no matter how small is your code, reuse it? I made a mistake over here. I wrote delete. I should have said deallocate because I had a function for it, unless you don't want to use that function, I do, unless you don't want people to call that function. If you want to, no problem. You know how to prevent outsiders to use it. Just grab it, put it in a private part. Oh, seriously? Sorry. 
deallocate. Okay, there we go. So, and it's void. What's going on here? I think it says like kind of delay. Void. Yeah. Deallocate. Yeah. All right. So now it's a private thingy for me. There's no problem with that. So let's run it and see what happens. Remember that when I started with just jump over student and go directly to the first executable? Now that's not the case. When I actually run the program and I come over here, now it stops at student. And when I press F11, it goes right to the constructor. So as you see, it's building the object, setting everything to null, and when it comes out, when we get over here, now we have a clean thing to work with. Name is blank, student number is blank. And now we can actually set it to whatever we want. We know the set works. So I'm just going to, actually it doesn't work, but hey. Uh, I mean, like it's going to have a bug, but I'll show you later. So it's going to run it, and it's going to show it. And as soon as main is about to end, it goes to the destructor of the student and deallocates the student, and therefore you're not going to have memory. Got it? Yes. It knows. That's the, it, that's the nature of C++. When it goes out of scope, because it is about to go out of scope. So let me show you this. You let me show you, let me show, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to actually just open a thing over here and close it over here. And it doesn't belong to anything. It's just the scope, right? And in here, I'm going to say, see out, I am here. Right? Now student is in this scope. This scope, oh shoot. They make everything clickable. <laughs> Stop, I don't want anything. All right, so, yeah, okay, so, there we go. So now if I actually run it, nine years later, when it runs, so it, the constructor is called, beautiful, everything is good, as you see. It is actually called, and everything happens. Then it comes over here. This is called show is displayed, and it reaches to the end of the scope. Student has to die because its scope, its scope is over. And now it says I'm here. So as you see, at any moment, that scope doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to belong to anything. If it belongs to a for loop, fine. If it belongs to an if, fine. But in any type of scope, when it reaches to the end, poof, everything that is within that scope is automatically terminated. Does that make it clean now? OK. It's going to fail. It's not going to fail, but it's going to cause memory leak. I'm going to explain in two seconds. OK? So I'm just going to save this as. Uh, I'm going to call it student in a scope. I want to bring, because that's an awkward thing, like a scope out of nowhere. So I'm going to call this uh, B uh, student created in a scope. And any time the battery ends and stops, then the class stops. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll save that one, and I'll get out of it. I'll open it up again. So let's see what happens. So in here, I'm going to come and do it. OK, so I don't need to say I'm here over here. I'm just going to say over here, s dot set. First, first of all, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come make my show more intelligent. What I'm going to do in here, I'm going to say, if m name, do all these things. Otherwise, I'm going to say see out this object is invalid. This is a safe invalid state, which means my, my show can recognize that something is wrong. So I'm going to say s.show right at the beginning. I can do that. So it's detectable. Then in here, I'm going to come over here and do as, oh, I didn't change the set. Uh, I'll do that later. Let me just do this for now. So in here is going to be Fred Soleil. 456456. Four, five, and s.show. So when I run the, pro first let's run the program. 
I'm just going to run it all at once without any debugging of any kind. As you see, everything worked. No error, nothing. Correct? It looks like it's OK. Please remember this. Actually take this on matrix and run it with Valgrind. In your description of the workshop shows that I'm actually running it Valgrind, yada, yada. Run it with Valgrind. You're going to see at the end, it's going to say you have memory leak. OK? So in here, I'm actually going to, um, no, it cannot be because if I fix it, it's not going to be. Anyways, it's not going to have memory leak after. But uh, remember, so let me just, um, I'm going to do something in here so you can actually get to the point and, and do it at that time. So um, in here, I'm going to go to uh, here, and I'm going to say commit. And I'm going to say student with memory leak. So ZAA, student with memory leak. Now you know what uh, uh, GitHub is good for? So you can actually come back to it, get that source out, and see exactly what, what did I mean. When I fix it, you're going to see how what was fixed. You can actually check the diff. OK, so I'll close it. Now, to, to get the memory leak, uh, to take the memory leak away, what I do over here will be this. Take a look. I'm going to come in the set that I'm actually setting these to. I'm going to say, I am just setting the name. What if set is already pointing to something else? Right? What if set is already pointing to something else? I have to first, before I actually allocate it, I need to see, because in my constructor, I'm setting uh, the thing to null, right? The, the name to null. So that's a flag. I can detect to see if it's actually pointing to something or not. So in here, I'm going to say if m name, I don't need to say, n let me just put it, not equal to null PTR. Yuck, you don't, nobody does that in, because null PTR is zero. Zero is false. If you put a pointer inside an if statement, it means it's not null. So that is redundant, what I wrote over there. But I'm just writing as a comment. If it is not null PTR, then delete it. Or sorry, deallocate. Before you allocate again. You follow? So, so it's like I am pointing to her, right? If I actually point to someone else, she's going to be still there. I have to say, get out of class. She goes out of class, then I'm pointing to someone else. Then that seat's going to be empty. You follow? One more time. If I want these three people to go out of the class, I am pointing to that general. I cannot move the pointer to someone else before I get him out. And then get him out and get him out. Are we okay with this? So this is what happened over here. And in deallocate, because deallocate can be called at any time, the rule of dynamic memory allocation says you delete, you set to null. Because if something is deleted, you have to flag it that this thing is not used. So I'm going to say delete, and then I'm going to say mname is set to null PTR. And I'm going to say flag it to empty. So it's detectable. So they know it's deleted. And that's why this memory allocation thing is such a big shebang in C++. Everybody says it's a crazy thing and we garbage collection in Java and things came around. Because all these things are you have to take care of. OK? So now we are good. So now we have this thing. And there is no memory leak now because, and let me just do it like this so, so, so it actually I can actually walk through it, OK? So now I'm going to put a stop sign over here. And I'm going to run the exact same program again, OK? So come on, come on, come on, come on. So is it running? Come on. There we go. All right. So let's put it at right. So now. As you see, this is the first time that is, so that was object was invalid. So that's the one that we went through. So object was invalid. Now it's coming to the first show. So it's in a first one. Now in this first one, m is null, correct? 
So what it's going to say, if it is null, don't do anything. So it doesn't, nothing happens, right? And then I'm going to come over here. Now it's going to actually do the allocation, yada, yada, everything comes over here, and it actually shows the thing, and it's done. Now the second time set is done, now it comes over here. What does it say? It's not null, correct? So the deallocation happens, and now name is null, and now it's going to do it on a clean memory, and therefore there is no memory leak. Got it? So this one, ladies and gentlemen, is now where we have, okay, I have to close these things, man, like 50 of them. There we go. So now I'm going to commit again, but this time, I'm going to say memory leak fixed. V1, because I'm going to mention something right now that changes the code again. If you recall, in previous thing when we were actually teaching dynamic memory allocation, I told you, ladies and gents, I told you, ladies and gents, delete has the mechanism to ignore deleting if it is null, correct? So that if statement is absolutely unnecessary. If it's null, nothing happens. If it isn't, it will get wiped out. So I don't need to check to see if it's null or not. It's just safe to deallocate. Done. Because delete already has that if statement in it. Delete says if it's null, nothing. If it's not null, I'll wipe it out. And because we followed the rule, and in the constructor we flagged it as null, delete can detect that it's not pointing to anything, or it is pointing to something. Are we okay with this? And therefore, and therefore, it brings up to dynamic memory allocation. I know I'm not giving you a break because the computer is going to die soon. <laughs> and actually, let me just let me just save this. I'm going to.